You know, it's wild to think that the first time I talked to this guest was back in 2020. Like, I think it was literally maybe four years ago uh, when we first talked, and, and now he's back again on one of my favorite things that we do. We've got questions for a bourbon enthusiast, and he's the owner of Knows Your Bourbon. Let's welcome back Chris Walters. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Really appreciate you having me on. Uh, same. And, you know, last time when, you know, that first time we talked, I couldn't see you. It was, you know, kind of, kind of a whole different thing, just audio for the podcast. We've come so far. I got video, social media, everything like that. So it's, you know, it's, it's like a whole new thing. This is great. It's, yeah, it's, it's looking good. I always love bringing the video aspect to it. I think it's really fun. Well, and I was going to say, you've got a few bottles behind you. Um, so I'm guess I'm going to just start off with that. You know, clearly you, you've gone deep down the uh, bourbon journey uh, over over time. But what was your bourbon journey been like? <laughs> yeah, you know, thinking back to 2015, um, I was I, I was wanting to get into something and I wasn't sure what that something was, but a spirit that I could just go pick a bottle up of from the local store and I don't have to mix a bunch of different ingredients, something I'm just going to enjoy straight out of the bottle. I thought maybe whiskey is a good category here. That's that's getting kind of popular. So I went to my local Total Wine and said, "Hey, can you can you recommend a a whiskey for me? Something that I'm just going to be able to pour into the glass and enjoy." And I didn't know the difference between Irish and Scotch and bourbon at the time. So I just I asked for whiskey, and they I think they pulled an Irish whiskey for me. Not knocking Irish whiskey. I'm sure there are some fantastic ones out there, but my personal experience with that bottle was I didn't love it, you know, and it took me a long time to kind of work my way through it. And so I thought, you know, if this is what whiskey is all about, maybe I need to go tequila. Maybe I need to go wine, something else. And I'm so glad that I didn't give up on the category because a few years later I came back and bullet bourbon really caught my eye. It's, it's down that way on the shelf. Um, and I was like, that's a cool looking bottle. It looks like it's old. I don't know if it actually is, but they did a great job with the package you know, design. It totally caught my eye. And I didn't have the vocabulary to describe it the way I would today. But what I was getting was those those brown sugar, those caramel, those those burnt, um, you know, charred oak notes and things. I was like, this is incredible. This is so different than that Irish. Um, I'm not sure why, but I love this. And so now bourbon, I'm in. And so that that set me on, you know, on that that journey. Well, I was gonna say, and I think you've gotten a few more bottles since, am I right? A couple, a couple, a couple more. Yeah, this what you see behind me is many, many years of of collecting, and, um, and I always use that term lightly because some people will literally collect and then keep it sealed, and that's like every bourbon drinker's pet peeve is seeing a bunch of sealed bottles up there. It's like, guys, let's open it up, let's share it. That's that's what it's for. Well, I was going to say, you can clearly see you've opened, drank, <laughs> and enjoyed, which is is what I, I love to see. And, you know, but but you talk about, you know, like at the beginning when you first started, you didn't really know all the notes that you were getting, or at least maybe how to describe them and things yeah. like that. So I'm guessing that may have led you down the road of where you, you know, launched the Knows Your Bur Bourbon. So is that kind of the path through that you're like, man, how, did, how, how am I going to learn more and be able to explain more of what I'm getting? Totally right. I, I went into research mode like I do with most of my hobbies and found these beautifully written tasting notes uh, that, you know, professional bourbon writers were, were noting about um, getting um, dried cherry and, you know, vanilla bean and nutmeg. And I'm like, what are they talking about? I think it tastes like bourbon. It's good. Maybe I like it or I don't like it. But how in the world are they getting those specific tasting notes? And so if you've ever, you know, done a Google search or come across a bourbon tasting wheel, this was a concept that was kind of new to me. Um, most of them you'll find out there start with some major categories in, in the middle. This particular one comes with my nosing kits and I think it's a, a pretty good um, starting point. So fruit, wood, grain, sweet, and spice. And I was like, Hey, that's, that's interesting. Um, I may not be able to get cedar, or orange or red pepper, but maybe I can get fruit. Maybe I can get sweet. So let me try to start there. Even there, you know, if, if that was a challenge for, for me, or if that's a challenge for you is like, is there something out there? Is there a tool? Is there a class? Is there a sommelier level designation, something that I can go through to be able to detect these different notes? Like what do they have that I don't? And it led me into the world of nosing kits. So I didn't create the category. Um, nosing kits existed well before Nose Your Bourbon launched. But what I found online was fairly expensive kits that were little vials of artificial um, you know, aromas. Maybe it's a perfume-based or essential oil, but it's basically an artificial scent made to smell like cherry, an artificial scent made to smell like corn. 
and I was like, okay, you know, it's interesting. That's, that's a good way. It's, it's not the real thing. So I don't love that. And it's clear. It's kind of like not authentic. So I thought maybe number one, and there were, you know, 150 to $300. I was like, yikes, I could buy a lot of bottles of bourbon for that amount of money at that time. Um, and I was like, maybe I can make my own with natural ingredients that will be, um, a little bit cooler. You know, you have something physical to, to look at. So as I, as you look at the canisters here, you've got real cracked corn, you've got actual dried cherry. I thought that would be cool from a visual standpoint, but also just the most authentic version of what that scent should actually be. If you've ever smelled, you know, an artificial cherry, a lot of times it can take me back to like cherry cough syrup, not exactly what you want to get on most of your bourbons. Right. So that was kind of my path was like, Hey, there's these things that exist. I feel like there's a market for something less expensive and more, more real ingredients. And so that sent me down the path to, to kind of explore this. Well, and, and like you said, that, that, that led you to what, you know, now we're talking about knows your bourbon. And was it as simple as the, I'm get sometimes it's funny when I talk to distillers, different things, they're like, man, I, you think they got a name, you look it up and you're like, someone already got it or it just doesn't, you know, things didn't line up right for you. Was it just as simple as like, oh, it came together. And, and was there any difficulties in names or logos or anything? Names came pretty quickly. Nose Your Bourbon was one of the first ones that I played around with. I liked the play on words, obviously, of like, knows, knows your bourbon. Some people were like, oh, does that mean like, you know, your bourbon? I'm like, okay, yeah, you could take it that way. Uh, but also it was just so, uh, just the, you don't have to guess what this thing is like knows your bourbon. Okay. Tell me more about that. You know, what is, what is nosing? What is this concept? So I love that tie into it. And just, a it's kind of a, you know, directive, like you should nose your bourbon. So I like, I like all those aspects. The name came fairly quick. Um, the logo, not so quick. I, ha I was working with a graphic designer and we had multiple iterations and it was just not coming together. Um, until we really kind of leaned into, I'll see if I have the, the logo on the packaging here. I do until I leaned in kind of the, um, the wheat stock and, um, hopefully that works for you. The wheat stock at the bottom knows your bourbon. I really like the kind of scripty font of bourbon. Um, when I saw that version of it, it didn't take many, uh, changes at all to be like, that's it. I like the circular aspect to it. It's going to work well down the line. If I ever think about apparel or anything like that. So yeah, I, I, that's where I kind of landed on that. <laughs> well, I was going to say you hit it right on the nose, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very on the nose. Yes. <laughs> no, but I, I do love the name and, 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 you know, it, it's really cool to see what you've created. Cause like you said, you, you let people actually kind of get that true smell and, and, you know, maybe feel a little more comfortable. So can you kind of explain how the, the kit, and I know you've even had an expansion pack and things like that help to actually train your senses and kind of help you figure out what those notes are? Absolutely. Um, there's two ways that I typically talk about doing this. Um, let's go back to that concept of the nosing or excuse me, the tasting wheel. So you've got your five categories. Um, if you're able to get one of those major five categories, you're, you know, you're taking your glass of bourbon. I've got a Glen Cairn here, which is my preferred glass of choice. And I'll keep my lips slightly parted when I nose that'll help some of the alcohol vapor pass through. Um, if I'm able to get one of those major categories, sweet or spicy or fruit forward, that's a great starting point. And again, if you're not even able to get that, don't be discouraged. This stuff takes time, but it's like one of the best types of homework you can ever do. Um, but start there. You know, if you can get one of those categories, say I get sweet, then what I can do is I can look at um, the tasting wheel that comes with it. And all of the ones that are highlighted in blue are going to be from your sweet um, category. So in the original kit, which is the 18 most common, everything that's labeled blue is going to be in that sweet category. So I've got, you know, vanilla, caramel, honey, chocolate, and brown sugar. So what I might do is, yes, I agree. This is sweet, but what kind of sweet? Is it more honey? Is it more chocolate? Is it brown sugar? So what I'll do then is I'll grab honey, just kind of randomly pick one from the category and I'm going to smell honey. What's, what's interesting about scent memory is if I say honey to you right now or brown sugar, everyone kind of has an idea of like, yeah, I know what that smells like. But when was the last time you actually smelled the ingredient, especially when you're sitting down to, to nose bourbon? It's probably been a while or maybe never, right? So mm. bringing that, the distance of time um, to the present to say like, I can smell this right now and I smell honey, you know, I, wow, okay, like I have a, extremely fresh memory of that now. And I'm going to go to the glass 
And what I find is if this aroma is present in this particular bourbon for me, then it will be elevated in the glass. What this kit does not do is trick your brain into thinking that all 18 tasting notes are now present in every bourbon. Like that's, that's not what it does. Um, but if I find one like this one actually did when I smelled honey and I smelled this bourbon, um, this is a, a four roses single barrel. I'm finding some honey notes in there. If I were to say smell chocolate, for example, and chocolate is not present in this bourbon, it's just going to kind of fall flat. I'm not going to magically taste or smell um, chocolate in this bourbon now. So that's that's one way to go about the kit. The other way is even without a glass of bourbon, this can be something that you just kind of do over time to train yourself again on those scent memories is I can just spend time with every 18 uh, ingredient in here and say, I'm just going to really focus on, you know, vanilla today. I'm going to smell that. I'm going to come back to it several times throughout the day. And what you're doing is you're reinforcing what that scent smells like to you so that the next time you, you come across it in a bourbon, it's going to be up. Oh, that is vanilla, not honey. You're going to be able to make that distinction a little bit better. I've even seen people do this kind of with fun. Maybe it's family game night or something. You want to blindfold everybody and be like, hey, what do you smell? And they're like, oh, shoot, is that nutmeg or allspice? So it's kind of a fun way to do it. It doesn't even have to involve drinking. It doesn't have to involve bourbon. Just kind of a fun way. But that's a, that's another good way to spend time with all 18 and just kind of lock that in for, for your brain. I was going to say, I, I like the homework aspect of it as well, because like you said, you're, you're beginning to learn and, and put things together, and it, it translates, too, into just other thing, <laughs> things. If you're you know, totally. cooking the, uh, in the kitchen or you're going out to a nice place, you're probably, like you said, if you've trained your nose for one thing, you might yes. even be able to pick up some notes uh, out, oh, out totally. about other places. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, obviously the kit is great and it's a, it's a great collection of, of ingredients, but I would encourage you don't stop there. Like as you are in the kitchen, you're baking, you're at a farmer's market, like be curious about the things that are around you, pick them up, smell them. It might give you a new, um, tasting note or a new nosing note to find going forward. Um, I heard somebody say, um, dragon fruit on a, on a tasting note once. And it's like, look, I'm not going to get dragon fruit because I'm not familiar with that scent. I'm not just magically going to be like, that's dragon fruit. But if you have an experience with that, it's something you can pull back from. So always, you know, be curious as you're going out, even like perfume shops, that's kind of a fun one. That's like nosing overload. Uh, but you'll notice that even there they have, and I include this in my expansion kit is coffee beans. That can be a way to kind of reset your nose in between so many different scents. Cause all, you know, over time, everything starts to smell the same. That's kind of where they, they went with, um, with that in the perfume shop concept. The other thing that's a good reset is actually smelling the back of your own hand. Your own scent is kind of a neutral scent for you. So that can be a nice way to reset. If you're like, I'm completely overwhelmed. I have no idea what I'm smelling. I like it. See, giving plenty yeah. of it, of advice, and and you talk about you know the the original nosing kit kind of perfect to start if you're you're wanting to get that that baseline and the expansion pack. How does that tie in and kind of obviously I know it expands, uh, but but you know can you kind of t- t- explain how that you know builds upon uh, the the original kit? Absolutely. As I looked at the original kit, um, I was kind of looking for you know back to the tasting wheel concept is you know the original eighteen. Um, I was able to find ingredients from every of the five categories to include there. Uh, but the one that felt a little bit light was the fruit side of things. So I really wanted to expand the fruit notes in the expansion kit. So while you have cherry in the, uh, the first kit, I expanded that to rose. So if you've ever gotten like a floral or potpourri type thing, plum, coconut, apricot, orange, and lemon in the expansion kit. So you've got a lot more of the green, which is your fruit notes. Um, also it, it went into some of the deeper, I don't want to say exotic, but maybe less common things to find, um, like hazelnut. So if you've tasted or nosed a beam product, you might've gotten that peanut, almost like a peanut brittle thing. Um, peanut powder is, is one of the ingredients in the first one. So if you have a peanut allergy or a nut allergy, uh, beware, it does say it on the kit. Um, but, um, there are other, there's pine, there's walnut, there's hazelnut and almond. So I kind of take that wood and nut aspect forward also. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's basically now between the two kits, you have 36 aromas from the same tasting wheel and it just gives you a, a better library of scents to, to pull from. Well, and, and like you, I'm, I'm guessing for you and, and for so many others, you get a good baseline knowledge. But then as you get, for, once you get, you're able to try more 
have a maybe go to a friend's house have have a different uh, opportunity to try different bourbons there's yeah. so many different things out there so it's it's great to see that and you know, when you first started Knows Your Bourbon, I, I think I, I was reading, you know, on, on one of the things that you and I had done that, you know, you were taking orders through Facebook messaging mm. and, and things like that. And, and now you you clear, you know, you got the website and, and so many different things. What's that journey been like for you to watch Knows Your Bourbon grow? It's It's been incredible. It's funny. I'm watching my oldest daughter go through the same thing right now. She's getting into hand lettering and making holiday cards. And she's accepting orders through Facebook. And I'm like, just wait, you're going to need an Etsy store. You're going to need something before you know it. But no, I mean, that is, you know, when you're, when you're kind of in proof of concept mode, like I don't want to spend a bunch of money to launch a website and build a huge, massive brand around this only to find out that like the product didn't meet a need in the market. So you kind of go out on a limb and, and find the, the path of least resistance to get to market. For me, that was Facebook groups. I started posting um, my uh, not this version of the kit I actually had a very rudimentary version that was just for me. I think I was using little lip gloss containers. You can imagine how much of a pain those are to open and close. They're like this tall, you know, it's just, it was not good, but it was the only thing I could think of at the, at the time to keep all the ingredients together. And started collecting orders through Facebook. It became a mess really quick because there was way more interest than I expected. That took me over to Etsy. Um, I had no idea at the time when I launched my Etsy store, what a perfect platform that would be because very, you know, traditionally speaking, most bourbon drinkers are guys. And I know that's changing, which is awesome. Um, most buyers on Etsy are women. And so looking for creative gifts for their guys. So I lucked into this perfect platform for it. It was, um, you know, just before COVID hit. And so everybody was at home looking for creative things to do. And so all the stars aligned for sure. Etsy took off like a rocket. Um, I got contacted by a buyer for Bespoke Post. So they do um, all, all types of different things, everything from clothing to, um, you know, record players to fire starting equipment, just some really cool things. And they have a whole barware section. And a buyer reached out to me through my Etsy store and said, have, have you ever considered wholesale? And so I learned a ton about that process. We got our first order together. I think it was 40 kits and they sold out in two hours. And he's like, all right, let's place a reorder. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. <laughs> so now we're working in quantities of, of hundreds. We also have a uh, subscription box uh, that we've put together for the, the past several years, and that goes out in quantities of the thousands. So that's been really fun to, to bring together. Actually, it's a, it's a smaller version of the kit that we put together in a, a box. So it needed to fit into a subscription box. So we just took the six most common um, from, from the original kit. So in there, you'll have oak, cherry, corn, caramel, brown sugar, and black pepper. So just one from each category and then doubled up on the, on the sweet because I have a sweet tooth and I think there's a lot of caramel and brown sugar in bourbon. So nah, it, it's amazing how far you, you've grown and, you know, and you, you've expanded beyond just the, the kit and kind of things like that. And I know you're even hosting uh, virtual nosing and tasting events now. Yeah, that was something I just launched for Father's Day of this year. And um, that's something I've always had a heart for is, you know, education. I think the product is great. It's a tool. Um, but being able to actually, you know, speak to a crowd or take take a group through a tasting, whether that's virtual or in person. Uh, but yeah, to, in order to get the widest reach, I went virtual with it. And it's basically, you know, you just pay for either access to the, the course or excuse me, not the course, but the uh, experience. And there's an add-on option to include the, the nosing kit. It's not required, uh, but it certainly does help. And so what we walk through is everything from whiskey, what is bourbon, how is it made, how is it aged, all, you know, kind of 30,000 foot view of that. And then we go right into how to nose, how to taste, what are some tips and tricks for just getting, getting the most out of it? What happens when I add water? What, what if I add ice? Um, is that a good way to, um, to really dissect a bourbon? Um, spoiler alert, it's not, uh, with ice. What I find is when it gets chilled and it gets diluted, you know, there's nothing wrong with sitting down and sipping on a bourbon uh, on the rocks, if that's what you prefer. But for me, it mutes the flavors. Um, I prefer room temperature neat. That's just kind of my, 
my go-to for that. So, but yeah, the virtual events have been super fun. I'm also talking to a local event space here that does a lot of like food and wine pairings and things to actually do some in-person stuff. So if you're ever in the, the Marietta, Georgia area, look me up. And, um, but also if you're, if you're a bourbon group or if you're on a barrel pick team or something like that, and you're looking for a fun way to either give back to your members or just do a cool experience, definitely reach out to me. Um, we can talk about dates and put something together that, that, uh, you know, works for you. I was going to say, it kind of lets people, if they're a little uncomfortable or maybe don't always know exactly what they're trying to do, it's a, it's a good way to kind of get that uh, baseline knowledge and, and feel comfortable with nosing. And, you yeah. know, it, it, it's, like I said, it's wild to think, you know, four years ago we were talking, I couldn't even see you <laughs> then, you know, and you had the nosing kit and I think the expansion pack, and now you've got the yeah. the nosing and tasting events. So what's next for you and, and nose your bourbon? Where Where's kind of the next uh, phase of, of things headed? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I love the education side of things. I'd be, I'd, I'd love to lean into that more, do doing more events and things like that. Um, very likely that you could see me at a future event, like a, um, you know, bourbon on the banks or something like that, like a, a whiskey festival. Um, those are things I'm definitely considering having a physical presence at in the future. Um, also the, the refill kit concept is something I've been throwing around and I need to, I need to get off my butt and actually do it. But, uh, the idea that you've bought a kit from me, it's been a couple of years and you just want a fresh set of ingredients. You don't necessarily need the new case and the canisters and everything, but just a fresh set of, of ingredients rather than running all around town, or maybe not even being able to find and source some of these ingredients because they are a little bit more, you know, s specialty. So, um, then you could take that concept further. You could put it on a subscription model and every year you automatically get a fresh set of ingredients and then we just you know charge the card on file type of type thing well it sounds like you got a, a few more thing things to work <laughs> on and uh, you know obviously at the end of the day if someone's interested in, in finding out more about knows your bourbon the kits the the glen karens the classes the, the tasting classes things like that how can they find your products yeah, so my website is knowsyourbourbon.com, and that's N N O S E. Um, and I actually have a promo code that I've set up for the Hops and Spirits listener. So it's just Hops ten, the the number ten. So H O P S number ten for ten percent off any order through December fifteenth, which is my holiday cutoff. So if you want something to arrive by Christmas, uh, make sure you get that order in by December fifteenth. But um, on social media, I'm pretty much everywhere. Just at at knows your bourbon. Um, so feel free to reach out and connect. I'd, I'd love to, to chat with you online. Well, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, 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 the code hops 10 and put it in 10% off and, and it is the holiday season. So if you got a bourbon enthusiast, instead of maybe getting those, you know, rocks and stuff that you can put in a, a glass, I might uh, suggest head down the, the nosing kit route. Cause I think it'll be uh, something that they can really enjoy and learn from. And, and Chris, thanks for, for taking the time to, to come back on and talk about Nose Your Bourbon, man. Absolutely. It was a pleasure catching up with you, and uh, hopefully we'll connect before the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs>